before we work with our millipedes and observe them, I want you to look at um, your observations that you made that are in your science notebook from yesterday. The, the lines were brown and the body was black. We counted all the stripes, then we times it by four, and we got 256 legs. They would go um, under the leaves, and one of them went straight into the dirt. I went ahead and wrote them up on the board, the characteristics that we looked when we were observing the fiddler crab. We want to look at these characteristics also when we actually observe the millipedes. Oh, we're going to put the glove on and take the, um, and take the millipedes out. Okay, here's one. When we first brought the millipedes in the classroom, I was concerned about there being some reservations from some of the children. That was really exciting that they got over the fear factor. Millipedes the best. That's weird. Can you see the legs? It's like right there. They're really cool because they live in the mid. It's like a little circle. This is my first time seeing a millipede. This is moss. And this is um, crunched up leaves, and they like to eat lettuce. My favorite part of the lesson was when they took the millipedes and then watched them in the trays and really observed and could see up close um, the movement of the legs. I saw their legs. It, since they have so many, they can't all pick up one side because they end up falling over. They pick their legs up like in a wave. Like in a wave, he said. Their legs, they all move the same way, and we were trying to no, find their no, no. eyes. Yeah. And they're really, yeah. really tiny. Yeah. No. It looks like they eat a, a little bit. Maybe when it's real dark, they can't see it, so they'll use their feeders, and maybe it can detect enemies. And then it'll go from one to the other. What does it feel like? It feels like a little ant. What is this like on his back? Stripes? Not some more specific. Camouflage scales, maybe. Yeah. These are the stripes in here. I found no, the good These are his legs. When we first started doing scientific drawings, it started with the frog lesson. And there, they were a little bit unfamiliar. As we moved to the millipede drawings, they added more details. And you labeled the parts, and what did you label? On the legs, the body, and the eyes, and the head. The habitat information table um, really is, to me, a time of reflection for the children. What else did we say we could put into the habitat? What other type of food? Apples. They saw the connections as we progress through the chart of how the animals had a lot of things in common as far as their basic needs. We're moving to the millipedes. Talk to me about the water in that situation, Tabitha. Maybe they like the wetness, but they don't like need to be in the water. When we use the Venn diagram, um, to actually compare the different habitats. The children were able to compare and contrast the living and non-living things, the things that they had in common. They all have plants in them. They all have plants. Let's see, the hair grass. That's Elodia. Elodia, non-living, means what? Elodia, the hair grass. What? what do we know about living versus non-living? Tell me about non-living. They don't have no air, no, no water, no food, nothing. And they all have some type of what in it? Living plants. Living like an animal, animal, right? What is really important about these habitats? How do, were they all connected to each other? Food. Food and water. Air. Raise your hand if you need food. Okay, put your hand down. Raise your hand if you need water. We all need the same to survive. Very similar. The excitement that they had was very obvious. They were just able to make so many more observations. And uh, that was a real positive experience and I'm sure this is something they'll never forget.